With gorgeous beaches and the home of the famous Full Moon Party, Koh Phangan is the last place you'd expect to find a crime such as murder. But when YouTuber chef and son of two famous actors Daniel Sancho invited his boyfriend to the island, that is precisely what would happen. It all began when Edwin agreed to stay with his lover for a holiday in paradise. But as partygoers woke the following morning, sickening packages were found around the island, and unfortunately, the story would only get darker from here. But who is Daniel Sancho? What did he plan to do to Edwin? And what happened next? Welcome or welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime, folks. My name is Adrian, and today we're heading to the beautiful island of Koh Phangan to look at a recent case of murder. Coffeehouse Crime is all about true crime, strange, and chilling stories, and the best way to support me is by subscribing to the channel. So, if you want to see more darkly fascinating content and more of Rockstar Adrian, then please hit subscribe now. And by the way, I like to respond to comments within the first hour of my videos going live, so if you'd like to catch me for a question or just say hi, then please hit the bell notification too. Right, and with that out of the way, please, Grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Daniel Sancho. Majestic temples, striking mountains, bustling streets, and jaw-dropping beaches. Of course, I'm talking about the idyllic country of Thailand. There is a lot to be excited about when it comes to this gorgeous country. Thailand is expected to reach more than 15 million tourists this year, thanks to its rich culture, delicious food, and wide range of natural beauty. The people of Thailand are an incredibly peaceful and kind bunch too. There really is a reason this place is called the Land of Smiles. Having travelled to this country a couple of times, times myself, let me speak from experience. There is so much to do here, and so many memories to be made. Be it wild nights in the city, hikes around mountains, beach time lounging, or even searching for a spiritual connection, Thailand has you covered. Today though, we're casting ourselves out to the Gulf of Thailand. So let's head south from Bangkok and take the plunge. Welcome to the island of Koh Phangan, folks. Population 12,000, temperature 85 Fahrenheit, and mood not a care in the world. World. You will likely find more cocktails and beach towels than people here. Koh Phangan may only be 57 square miles in size, but it's brimming with stunning beaches. Take a step back from the shoreline, and you'll find many restaurants and shops that fill Koh Phangan's town and streets. If you're feeling more adventurous, you can explore the island's nature reserve, teeming with jungle trails, waterfalls, and of course, the rainforest. There are many things that make Koh Phangan interesting, with the island's monthly all-night festival, the Full Moon Party, considered to be its most unique selling point. Every Full Moon Party, which you'll never guess happens every Full Moon, will attract tens of thousands of tourists to the island. Visitors gather on the beaches to dance the night away, indulging in cocktails under the moonlight to celebrate life. Electronic music blasts through the beaches, streets, and even jungles of Koh Phangan, and bars stay open through to sunrise, with many guests committing to see it before they finally stumble to bed. Now, no one is really sure where the full moon party originated, but it has been dated back to the 70s, when Koh Phangan was merely a stop-off point for tourists between Thailand and India. Back then, the island didn't have much more than a village, and even that was quite difficult to access without any paved roads leading to it. Maybe it was the lack of crowds and lighting at the time, but the island seemed to be the perfect place to appreciate the moon and all tourists travelling through caught on to this. Now, the full moon party may sound exciting when you think about it, but it basically transformed a beautiful natural island to one of intensive partying and heavy drinking. And as you can likely guess, the mess left behind in the mornings is absolutely awful. Empty bottles, wrappers, and even drugs litter the streets and beaches of Koh Phang An, and it's often up to the locals to clean up this aftermath. I mean, if you ever want to look up the definition of extractive tourism, this is the place. Saying that, I don't think anyone was prepared for what they would find amongst the litter on a quiet summer morning. August the 3rd began like any other day on Koh Phang An, which just so happened to be a Thursday. Some of those on the island were beginning their day with a coffee, some with a brutal hangover, and some with both. 
The weather was nothing out of the ordinary, and people were enjoying the fresh morning air. Sadly though, not all would continue to be peaceful. It was at 12.30pm local time that a garbage collector was doing his usual rounds at the local landfill, when he noticed that his unassuming cargo contained something out of the ordinary. Upon closer inspection, he found an unusual fertilizer bag that was full of wet rotten material. It almost seemed like an animal had been dumped in the bag and thrown away. But after peering closer to get a better look, his face suddenly paled when he realised that the bag contained parts of a human body. It was later revealed that he'd discovered a human pelvis along with human intestines. And after reporting his findings to the police, officers arrived on scene and determined that the parts could not belong to a local as they were too large in size. That is when various other human body parts started to crop up all across the island. Locals would discover a total of 14 bags in total, and with so much distance and variation between them, the police were not sure if this was just one body or multiple. Knowing that they likely had the murder of a tourist on their hands, police sprang into action immediately, scouring the land as they spread the message of warning to others on the island. Upon further inspection of that same landfill site, officers eventually found another bag, this time containing human legs and articles of clothing. They determined from these artifacts that the murder must have happened about 36 hours prior due to its state of decomposition, and after DNA testing, forensic experts would eventually conclude that the body belonged to a man named Edwin Arietta Artiga. But who precisely was Edwin? Why was he deceased and dismembered in front of them? And where was the rest of him? Born in Santa Cruz de Lorisa in the Cordoba region of northern Colombia, Edwin was raised by two loving and successful parents. His father worked as a mechanic repairing radios and televisions, while his mother was a retired school teacher. Both his mother and his father were respected members of their communities, working to educate and support their friends and family around them. Despite living separately, Edwin's mother would often visit him and his father. That was until she sadly passed away at the age of 44. With dreams of moving abroad and and working as a surgeon, Edwin studied hard at university to acquire his medical training. After years of hard work and finally graduating, Edwin moved to Monteria to begin work as a plastic surgeon, and over the next 10 years performed hundreds of cosmetic surgeries. Soon after this, Edwin became a member of the Colombian Society of Aesthetic and Reconstructive Plastic Surgery, which is an internationally recognised institution. And with over 35,000 followers on his private and business Instagram profiles, he was both locally and internationally recognised in the plastic surgery industry. It was in December of 2022, and through his personal Instagram account, that Edwin began to connect with a Spanish man named Daniel Sancho. Nearly 20 years his junior, Daniel stood out to Edwin as a handsome and charming young man, with long, sun-bleached hair and a well-toned physique. The two began to message each other quite frequently, and after forming a friendship, they started an intermittent relationship filled with romance. Things would eventually become sexual, with both men sending rather explicit photos and messages to one another. As the months passed by, Edwin's relationship with Daniel progressed from casual to serious. He allegedly began to give Daniel large sums of money to keep him happy, which included a credit card to use as he desired along with over 10,000 US dollars to help kickstart his own restaurant. More on that in just a moment. Despite their secret love affair, Edwin began to think about a committed life with Daniel outside of Colombia and according to a close friend, he aspired to open two clinics in Spain, one each in the large cities of Barcelona and Madrid, where the two lovers would live. Before moving to Spain though, Daniel invited him to the beautiful country of Thailand. He wanted to spend some intimate time with his partner, away from both of their busy schedules. Now Edwin loved to travel the world, and with such a healthy bank account, this never really was a problem for him. In fact, he often left Colombia for a change in scenery and culture. Going on holiday was a great way to see Daniel secretly, and Thailand seemed to be the perfect place for this. And so on August the 1st, 2023, the two met on the island of Koh Phang An. Daniel invited Edwin to celebrate one of the full moon parties, which, as we've already discussed, is a very pertinent thing to the island. I mean, personally, I think they absolutely suck, but maybe that's just me. Daniel, who'd already arrived at Koh Phang An the day prior, met Edwin at the airport, and after picking him up with his motorcycle, the two travelled to Had Salad Villa Resort to stay in their bungalow. Before we continue our story though, let's talk a little bit about Daniel Sancho, because he's not an ordinary person either. 
You see, Daniel is no stranger to fame. Born on June the 11th, 1994, Daniel Geronimo Sancho Roncalo is the first son of famous Spanish actors Rodolfo and Silvia Roncalo. His parents naturally met in acting class, and at the young ages of 19 and 18, they gave birth to Daniel. Both parents were together for a little over a decade before separating amicably, where Daniel then lived with his father afterwards. Daniel also has a sister named Jimena. They share a father, with her mother being another famous actress named Senia Tostado Caballero. To add to his parents, his grandfather, named Sancho Gracia, is another well-known Spanish actor. Due to the success of his family around him, Daniel lived an extremely comfortable and relaxed lifestyle. He was known as a happy and athletic child, and enjoyed sports like tennis and surfing. Despite his family's success in the acting world, he instead chose to dive headfirst into the world of culinary arts. And working in the food service industry, he cooked at the upscale catering company La Bahim. But despite being successful in his chosen field, he only earned a fraction compared to the rest of his family. Like most people that are born into wealth, David took advantage of the money around him. He was no stranger to fancy food, private jets, and luxury traveling. And he shared his lifestyle on social media too, often posting about his passions for gastronomy, surfing, and traveling the world. Now, despite being cut from high quality cloth, the media did not pay much attention to him during his adult years. His social media followings are modest at best, and his YouTube channel, where he posted cooking videos doesn't pick up much traction even to this day. Muy buenas disfrutones, ¿cómo estamos? Vamos a hacer hoy un arroz con almejas espectacular con 7 ingredientes que tengo aquí. Vamos a hacer un arroz en 25 minutitos de otro nivel. Bueno, es que ni siquiera le voy a poner todo. Ahí. Otro nivel. Se acabó el vídeo, que la gente que está aquí conmigo tiene que probar esto caliente por una vez. Así que suscribiros al canal, dar a like, dejad en los comentarios que os ha parecido la receta, que os molaría que hiciera. Y nada, nos vemos en el próximo vídeo. Hasta luego, disfrutones. Although his videos are shot well with high production quality and obviously expensive recording equipment, they don't receive anywhere near as much attention as you'd think from someone who was raised by notable actors on all sides of his family. As previously mentioned, Daniel loved to travel, and known for its nightlife, incredible food, and excellent surf, Thailand was one of the places that he loved most. It therefore seemed an obvious opportunity for his partner Edwin to join in on the beauty. Daniel arrived on Koh Phang An on Monday, July the 31st, with Edwin arriving arriving the very next day. But as the days passed by, Edwin's family were growing concerned. He had failed to message them ever since making it to the island, which was strange as normally he always kept in touch. Already knowing about his relationship with Daniel, Edwin's sister reached out to him on Instagram and urged him to report her brother as missing to the authorities. Daniel reluctantly took her advice and made his way down to the station. But, unbeknownst to either of them at the time, parts of Edwin's body were now being discovered at multiple sites across the island. After arriving at the police station, officers noticed multiple scratches and cuts across Daniel's body. Now, this information looked naturally concerning, so officers made the decision to detain Daniel while they did their own private investigation at the bungalow. Now, at first glance, the room appeared to be spotless. The bathroom seemed to be immaculately clean, as did the kitchen and the bedroom. But after a closer inspection of the drains, for forensic officers found some very disturbing evidence. The drain appeared to contain human hair and a meat-like substance, possibly human body tissue, and a quick DNA test would confirm the very worst of their suspicions. Someone had suffered tremendously in this bungalow, but the nature of their suffering was still to be known. While officers were out looking for evidence, others were questioning Daniel back at the station. The young man would initially deny any involvement in Edwin's disappearance, but after being confronted with the evidence they had found, his his story abruptly changed. According to Daniel, their holiday together began positively. Following a bike ride away from the airport, the two enjoyed themselves on the island. As the sun began to set over the horizon, the island's hotels and clubs started to light up. Festival goers could be heard partying throughout the many beaches and buildings. 
But despite the electric energy found all around them, the couple decided to miss out on these celebrations. Unfortunately, despite this being their first night together, they had turned argumentative already. Daniel claimed that Edwin had become too pushy for physical affection, and was even harassing him for sex. With tensions rising between both men, their argument eventually became physical. Amidst this struggle, Daniel claims that he pushed Edwin into the bathroom, where he then hit his head and collapsed unconscious. In an effort to wake Edwin up, he poured water over his head. But when he failed to come back around, Daniel then allegedly stabbed Edwin twice in the chest before cutting his throat. I have no idea why Daniel thought this was an acceptable follow-up, by the way, and all of this is his very own story. After the murder, he dismembered Edwin into 14 separate pieces before disposing them in various locations around the island. La policía tailandesa ha revelado los resultados de la autopsia realizada al cirujano colombiano Edwin Arrieta. Según ese informe, Daniel Sancho, el asesino confeso, le dio un puñetazo que lo derribó, pero Edwin murió degollado. Con estos resultados ya en la mesa de los investigadores se responde a una de las preguntas más importantes que había quedado en el aire, la causa concreta de la muerte. Y esa es, según el informe de la autopsia, que Daniel Sancho degolló a Edwin Arrieta. Además, con el contenido de la autopsia, ahora sí la policía tailandesa hace un relato cronológico de cómo creen que ocurrieron los hechos en la villa, el día del crimen. En primer lugar hubo una pelea entre ambos, después Daniel Sancho le dio un puñetazo a Edwin Arrieta que se golpeó la cabeza contra el lavabo y cayó al suelo, pero en ese momento seguía con vida. Fue después, según el análisis forense, cuando Daniel Sancho le cortó el cuello y eso fue lo que acabó con su vida. El informe con estos últimos resultados de las investigaciones está previsto que se traslade a la Fiscalía tailandesa esta misma semana. This was done over a period of 24 hours, with some of these body parts making it into the ocean after renting a kayak to do so. Receipts at the rental store confirm that Daniel arrived shortly after 9pm on August the 1st, visibly agitated and tense at the time. After being told that he couldn't rent a kayak so late in the day, he then used some of Daddy's money to offer $1,000 to buy it instead, to which a staff member accepted. These details also confirm that Edwin was sadly murdered on the first day he arrived. Daniel then grabbed Edwin's suitcase and limbs, paddled out to sea, dumped it into the ocean, returned to his bungalow, and then slept with half of Edwin still in the room. The following morning, he got up and then motored around the island, dropping various pieces of his body in different places. Daniel then checked out of the villa at 9am on Thursday the 3rd, and, unknown to him at the time, the first of many body parts of Edwin would be found just a few minutes later. Searching for motive, police asked Daniel about the nature of his relationship with Edwin and Daniel's response may be surprising. Although Daniel confessed to murdering Edwin, he denied ever having a sexual or even romantic relationship with him. Apparently, Daniel was his hostage, which was fueled by obsession. Daniel further said, he deceived me. He made me believe that what he wanted was to do business with me, to put money into the company in which I'm a partner. But it was all lies. The only thing he wanted was me, for me to be his boyfriend. And every time I tried to get away from him, he would threaten me. Daniel also claimed that after several months of being in contact with Edwin, he tried multiple times to break up, all of which were unsuccessful. And according to the Thai press, multiple messages on Daniel's phone could confirmed that Edwin threatened to kill or blackmail Daniel if he tried to end the relationship. Daniel claims he disguised the trip to Thailand as a holiday for the pair when, in reality, he wanted to break up with Edwin. To add to this, he also denied being gay entirely and planned to marry a Spanish woman in the coming months and this enraged Edwin. And so, the culmination of a terrible breakup, refusal of sex, and the discovery of his relationship with Laura supposedly resulted in the violent fight that ended in Edwin's untimely death. Despite Daniel's confession, which suggested the murder had happened spontaneously, investigating officers found rather contradicting evidence. Surveillance cameras confirmed that on the morning before picking up Edwin, Daniel purchased a saw, knives, detergent, and other cleaning utensils from a supermarket. With this case being so recent, Daniel is yet to stand trial, meaning the timeline of events is yet to be confirmed. So, what do the Thai police believe as of now? Three weeks ago, on August the 15th, Police Chief Surachate Hakpan, known as Big Joke, stated that the case involving Daniel Sancho has now been closed. Authorities believe that Daniel's primary motive was to expunge Edwin from his life completely so that he could marry his girlfriend without any secrets coming out in the future. In a local news conference, Big Joke said, It can be said that this case has already closed and has been resolved quickly. The police are now preparing the final report to send to the prosecutor's office.
We have consulted with the prosecutor on some of the evidence, and it is consistent enough to charge him with premeditated murder, which carries the death penalty. As of now, there are various reports as to where Daniel is currently being held. Big Joke claims that Daniel is on the mainland where he continues to be interrogated, but his lawyer on the other hand claims he is on the neighbouring island of Koh Samui in a higher security prison. Wherever Daniel is being held, the prosecution team have until the end of October 2023 to complete their investigation and build a case against him. With so much money at their disposal, Daniel's family confirmed that they have hired the famous lawyer Marcus Garcia Montes to aid in their son's defence. And with such a heavy price tag, who knows how this trial may develop. The Thai prosecution has commented to say that this case depends on all the evidence available, and how Daniel's own lawyer and defence will move. And although they have confirmed that his trial will be before the end of this calendar year, they have not had a final date confirmed yet. Despite a solid defence team, Daniel's alleged crimes have the potential to result in the death penalty, which of course means his life literally is on the line. Saying that, if his defence team does disagree with the verdict, they do have the right to appeal, which can delay his death by two to three years. With the evidence available, I would say it's not looking good for Daniel. With forensic evidence, witness testimonies, surveillance footage, and even his own statement against him. Daniel currently sits somewhere in Thailand, awaiting justice while his defence team and the prosecution both race to build a case for and against him. While he waits, citizens of Colombia, Spain, and Thailand are all shocked and disgusted by the gruesome event. The public opinion seems to be relatively variable too. Not many people refute Daniel's guilt, but there is some variation of opinion over Edwin's own innocence. Regardless, he he absolutely did not deserve to lose his life. Fellow doctors, clients, friends and family across Colombia often come together to pay their respects to Edwin. Many claim that he was the best surgeon they had ever worked with, as well as being a kind and professional man. Edwin's family in particular are claiming that Daniel's version of events are fabricated, that the Edwin they know would never have blackmailed someone he cared so much about. Daniel's family, on the other hand, are staying relatively tight-lipped about the situation. Concerningly, some of the Spanish media are trying to minimise the severity of this case, and shockingly, are even empathising with Daniel's actions. Of course, this event has reached the attention of international media, hence why I'm here telling you this sorry story today. People across the globe are waiting for Daniel's trial to begin and as always, I'll be right here to tell you the outcome when a verdict is reached. But otherwise, yeah, I think that's pretty much the end of the story for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate you being here. Before I go though, what do you think about this case? Do you think that Edwin's death was premeditated or just violently spontaneous? please let me know down below. As always, folks, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And a big thank you to Andrew for helping me with this video. If it wasn't for your Spanish, I really would be stuck in the mud. Just a quick reminder that if you'd like to directly support me, I do have a Patreon. And if you join, you get early access to my videos and additional content. And also, if you like true crime and darkly fascinating stories, or simply just hate full moon parties, then please remember to subscribe. I do also have a bunch of social media profiles if you'd like to follow me, and you can find these right here. Anyway, Anyway folks, that's the end of the video. Thank you again for watching, and as always, I'll see you again very soon for another video. Until that moment arrives though, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, drink more coffee, and above all else, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.